this is Dr. Kavita Singh, Associate Professor in Department of Civil Engineering in Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. So today we'll be discussing about the definition and terminology on remote sensing engineers. So we have studied the entire course with our various lectures. We have discussed about many things like we have discussed about photogrammetry, we have discussed about uh, remote sensing, we have discussed about the GIS. We have even discussed about the uh, database management system, what resource applications, various applications we have all studied. Now, which type of definitions, what type of definitions, and what is the terminology of that definitions will be understanding and valuable. So, let us start with the topics. What are the questions? Which type of questions? Which type of definitions are uh, likely to be asked in the exams that we'll be discussing? So let us start with the first uh, topic here, define photogrammetry. So usually this is from the first unit which we have studied about the photogrammetry. So when we have studied about the photogrammetry, we remember uh, what is the photogrammetry, it is the art and science and technology of without touching the object with any physical contact and which will give us the geographical information, which will give us the uh, land information, which will give us the spatial information. Uh, so, photogrammetry can be defined as the science of making reliable measurements of photographs. So, it is a science of making the reliable measurements of the photograph by the photograph or which the photo imagery to locate features on or above the surface of the photo. So, it will help, it is helpful to locate the features or on, on a or above the surface of the earth, it helps in the measurements. Measurements means here, measurements means we can just measure the height of the building, whichever object if you want, uh, we can just measure the height of the building. Uh, we can measure the height of the tree, we can measure the height of any object, uh, whatever we require to measure based on the aerial photos. So, we are going to receive the uh, aerial photos here. So, the aerial photos will help us to just get the information about the uh, the air the photos what we receive. Now they explain the advantages of photogrammetry survey. So terrain data and mapping features can be extracted from stereo images, models, little effort and at the low cost. So what is surveying, what is photogrammetry here? So what are the advantages here? We can just the advantages of photogrammetry here is we can just extract the stereo images. So what is a stereo image? So if you remember in the lectures which when we have discussed about the photogrammetry the stereo image is the image which has the overlapping areas. Okay, it has an overlapping area. So here, sixty percent of the area will be overlapping. Sixty percent of the area will be overlapping. So this sixty percent of the overlapping area will show us the three three D illusion. Okay, it will show us the three D illusion. So once you see the three D illusion, so that three D illusion itself it is called as the this illusion is called as the stereo. So this the pair of photo, one pair and two pair of photo, it is called as the stereo photo. So it will give us the stereo vision, stereo vision of the models and it has a little comfort uh, effort at the low cost and large area mapping and digital terrain models can be accomplished uh, quicker and at the lower cost and when compared to the ground survey methods, compared to the ground survey methods, the terrain models can be accomplished and at quicker and at the lower cost and then it is compared to the ground survey methods. Now explain the various disadvantages of photogrammetry survey. So what are the disadvantages here of photogrammetry survey? Here it is seasonal weather patterns help produce increased wind, in increased wind and cloud cover may hamper the ability to perform the mission. These are the disadvantages whenever the cloud cover is there, whenever the wind cover is there, so it will not allow the pilot to just take the photo of uh, such area and may be difficult to, to collect the measurements in the area of the dark shadows, dense vegetation, snow and water or overhanging features. So because it is having, it is photogrammetry is totally dependent on the sunlight, so whenever the sunlight is available, uh, the, uh, the photos can be taken of such places. So the problem here, what we are facing here is whenever the vegetation dense, uh, vegetation snow and water or overhanging features are there, that time the collection of the photos are very difficult. Now I explain the principles of photogrammetry. So what are the principles of photogrammetry here is, the principal point of each photograph is used to fixed stations and place. 
drawn to get points of intersection and very similar to those used in a painting. So here uh, the principal, principal point is what is the principal point here. So if you remember we have discussed in the previous lecture what is the principal point. Each aerial photo, suppose this is the aerial photo. This is the aerial photo. So each aerial photo is having this uh, kind of marks on the each side of the uh, photo. So once you join this line, this line and this line and what you center you receive here is this center is called as the principal point. So this principal point is principal point is used for the uh, purpose of uh, finding out the exact fixation to the map, to the image. So intersection is very similar to those in the plane table. So what are the types of photogrammetry here? So we have two types of photogrammetry. One is terrestrial and aerial. So we have two types of photogrammetry here. So terrestrial and aerial. So what is aerial photograph? Aerial photograph, suppose the this is taken from the air. Okay, air. So taking the information which is taken from the air. So what will be the vehicle here? Either the vehicle will be helicopter, either the vehicle will be aeroplane. Okay, aeroplane. So helicopter and aeroplane will be there. So the photos are taken uh, from this top to the ground. So this is the ground here. So if you take this information, if you capture this information from the air, it is called as the aerial photo. So once the air information which is captured from the terrestrial, terrestrial means what? Terrestrial means ground. So if you capture the information from the ground, so that kind of photo is just called as the terrestrial photo. So here uh, from the ground, if the camera station is here, which is on the tripod. So if you capture with this range, so this, this is the image we are going to capture. This type of photograph, it is called as the terrestrial photograph. Now terrest define terrestrial photograph. Now same thing you can see here, what is terrestrial photograph? So photographs which are taken from the camera stations at the fixed position or near the ground is known as a terrestrial photograph. So fixed position on the ground, so this is the fixed position on the ground. From here, the photo is captured. So your camera is not moving, the camera it is there on the same locations from there, the camera, the information is captured, so that is called as terrestrial photograph. So the photographs are taken by the means of photo theodolite, uh, which is combination of the camera and the theodolite. So this type of photographs are taken. Now what are what is the what are the requirements of aerial camera? So the requirements of aerial camera here is fast lens, high speed, uh, sufficient shutter, high speed. Uh, immersion of the film and the magazine to hold the large walls of the film. So these are the requirements of the aerial photograph that it, it should have a fast lens, it should have a high speed sufficient shutter and high speed immersion of the film and the magazine should be hold with the large walls of the film. Define the tilt displacement. So what is the tilt displacement here? So tilt means uh, the movement of the uh, suppose the camera is here, so it, when the photo is it to be vertical, a slight tilt is there. If the photo should be taken here, so the photo will be taken somewhat here. So this is called as a tilt. So this is the tilt of the photo, which is defined in the difference between the distance in the image and the point on the tilted photograph. So from the isocenter, the distance of the image at the same point on the photograph from the isocenter, if there had been no tilt. Now define uh, exposure or air station. So what is exposure and air station? So exposure station is the exact exact position of the front nodal or front nodal point of the lens in the air at the instant of the exposure. So that is called as the exposure station. Now define flying. So what is the flying height here? So flying height is the elevation of the air station above the mean sea level. So flying height is it is the elevation above the mean sea level and it is also known as the flying height of the aircraft. So flying height of the aircraft from the mean sea level is if uh, here is a photo, so this is the photo to be taken. So flying height is somewhat here. So your camera is somewhat here. So this will be the flying height. So this is the flying height from the flying height. Flying height. From the ground, flying height from the ground. Okay, so this is called as the elevation and mean sea level uh, is also known as the flying height on the aircraft. Now, explain the principal point. So, principal point is the point where the perpendicular drop from the frontal node points strikes the photograph. So, this is the principal point. So, this is the photo. Uh, so, you have this relation marks on all the sides. 
So once you join this solution box, you will get a point here. So this point is called as a PP. So it is called as a principal point here in this area. Now what is meant by the focal length? So the focal length is a perpendicular distance from the center. It is a perpendicular distance from the center of the camera lens to either the picture plane or the camera plane. So it's a perpendicular distance from the perpendicular distance from the camera lens, either the picture plane or the camera plane. Now explain the horizontal point. What is the horizontal point? So the point in the intersection of the principal line, the horizontal line through the perspective center zero, it's called as a horizontal. Now define tilt. What is tilt here? So the deviation in the plate of the horizontal plane at the time of the exposure is called as a tilt. So the deviation of a plate from the horizontal plane at the time of the exposure it is called as a tilt. Now define remote sensing. So what is remote sensing here? So remote sensing is the art and science of obtaining the information about an object feature without physically coming into the contact. So that object or feature is called as remote sensing. So it's a art and science and technology. So remote sensing is a without without any physical contact, without any physical contact, uh, gathering the information, okay? gathering the information is called as remote sensing. So it's like without any physical contact, you are able to get the information. I want, uh, that is called as remote sensing. Now humans apply remote sensing in their day-to-day -day business uh, through vision, through hearing, through sense of smell. So this remote sensing is applied in day-to-day -day business through vision. Like vision is also remote sensing. How? Uh, we can see the object without touching it. So that is called as remote sensing. So we are not able to touch, but we are able to identify the object. So that is a remote sensing. Now hearing means we are not able to, we are not hear. Hearing is we are not touching the thing, but we are able to hear. Sense of smell means we are not touching the smell, but we are able to sense the smell. So that is called as uh, hearing and explain the applications of remote sensing. So what are the applications of remote sensing here? It needs extensive applications in civil engineering, including watershed studies, hydrological states, fluxes, simulation, hydrological modeling, disaster management, services, such as flood, drought, warning and monitoring. So this is how the applications of remote sensing works. So in the civil engineering, it, it could include the watershed studies, it could include the hydrological states, uh, fluxes, simulation, hydrological modeling, disaster management services, such as flood, drought, warning, and monitoring system. Now, what are the disadvantages of remote sensing here? So we have few disadvantages also in remote sensing. The disadvantages of remote sensing here is the interpretation of imagery requires a certain skill level nine. So the interpretation of imagery requires a certain skill level in mind. Needs cross verification with ground survey data. Data from multiple sources may create confusion. So first here disadvantage here is interpretation of imagery which is required and skill person should be required to just interpret the data. Second thing is it needs the cross verification with the ground and field check or field visit is required to just cross check the information. Uh, survey the data is required to survey the data and data from multiple sources may create the confusion for them. Now explain the electromagnetic radiation EMR spectrum. So what is electromagnetic radiation? So distribution of continuum of radiant energy can be plotted as a function of wavelength and is also known as the electromagnetic radiation. So distribution of continuum, continuum of radiant energy. So what is continuum of radiant energy? So it uh, it's like frequency from 0 0.4 to 0 0.7, it ranges from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So here it is range is the visible one, visible range. Okay. Now we here we have infrared range, then we have microwave, microwave, then we have radio. I'm sorry, then we have thermal, IO, thermal. Microwave and we have radio D. Okay, so these are the regions we have here in the electromagnetic spectrum with the frequency. It ranges from uh, low frequency to high frequency. So, this is uh, electromagnetic radiation in the spectrum. Now, define ground level remote sensing. So, what is ground level remote sensing? Ground level remote sensing is 
Long learning removes it in very close to the ground. They are basically used to develop calibrate sensors for different features on the earth surface and uh, define airborne remote sensing and airborne remote sensing downward and sideward looking sensors mounted on uh, aircrafts are used to obtain the images of the earth surface. So very high spatial resolution images like 20 cm or less can be obtained through this uh, airborne remote sensing. Now define electromagnetic energy. What is electromagnetic energy here? So electromagnetic energy includes all energy moving in the harmonic uh, uh, sinusoidal and wave pattern with the velocity equal to that of light. Harmonic pattern means waves occurring at a frequent intervals of light. So what do you mean by scattering? Now here what is a scattering here? So atmospheric scattering it is due to some particles which is present in the atmosphere. The small particles in the atmosphere use a portion of incident radiation in all the directions. So there is no energy uh, transformations with scattering, but the spatial distribution of energy is altered during the scattering. So always the scattering occurs whenever this uh, uh, particles, the small particles, are present on the surf, uh, in the atmosphere. Explain the types of scattering. So we have two types of three types of scattering: Rayleigh scattering, mass scattering, and mass electric scattering. So what is Rayleigh scattering here? When the particle size is smaller than the my scattering when the particle size is equal to the wavelength and uh, non selective when the particle size is larger to the wavelength that is called as a non selective part scattering. So, uh, when it occurs when the particles are present in the atmosphere. So, what is the purpose of sensor? What does sensor do? So, solar energy reflected by targets at specific wavelengths bands are recorded using the sensors on board airborne or spaceborne platforms. So define absorption. What is absorption here? So there are two mechanisms, scattering and absorption. So absorption is the process uh, in which incident energy is retained by the particles in the atmosphere with a given wavelength. Now define reflection. What is reflection here? So reflection is the process in which incident energy is redirected in such a way that the angle of uh, incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So reflection is the process in which the incident energy is redirected and the way the angle of incident is equal to the angle of reflection and the uh, reflected radiation leaves the surface at the same angle as it approaches. So it leaves the uh, leaves the surface of the same angle as it is approached. It's called as reflection. Now coming to the GIS. What is a GIS? Define GIS. So GIS geographical information system that is designed to capture, store, manipulate, analyze, manage all present all types of geographical data. So GIS is a set of our hardware and software which will help us to manipulate the data, analyze the data, manage the data, present the data, all the types of data which can we can just do the analysis of this all data. Uh, that is called as GIS. Now what is geography? Geography means uh, that some portion of the data is spatial, some portion of the data is spatial. So, in other words, the data that is in the same way, same way which is reference to the uh, location on the earth, which is called as geography. Geography, geo means earth. So, information about the earth, the graphical features of the earth is called as a geography. Now, explain GPS. So, what is GPS? GPS is the global positioning system. So, GPS, which stands for the global positioning system, is uh, the only system today able to show you uh, the exact uh, position on the earth anytime, anywhere, and, uh, uh, any in any weather. So if you want to just navigate from one place to another, uh, so we need this GPS device, uh, which will show you all the information of location. So wherever you stand, uh, wherever you want to locate the information, it will give you the latitude and longitude of that area. It will give you the location of such areas, uh, which will provide you the information about that. Yes. So, what do you understand by global positioning system? Uh, so, GPS is uh, the way the gather the accurate uh, linear point locations uh, data. Originally, it was devised in the 1970 by the Department of Defense and Military Purposes. And the current GPS consists of 28 satellites that orbit the Earth. Consists of uh, 28 satellites which will orbit the Earth, transmitting the navigational signal. So it will transmit the navigational signals to the ground. Now what is GIS mapping? 
So GIS mapping, so the map uh, is of course a visual interpretation representation of uh, quantifiable data compared to the traditional tables, maps. GIS map is a dynamic and interactive in nature. So it, has, it is a dynamic and interactive in nature. So the visual representation of the data which you can see. So that is called as a map. So it is in like interpreting the information in the form of symbols and themes. So that all information is called as a map. So compared to traditional tables, GIS map is dynamic and interactive. So it can reveal the previously unseen features by highlighting them and show changes and these features over time based on the given attributes. Explain the types of mapping in GIS. What are the different types of mapping in GIS? So mapping of GIS map layers, they allow for stacking the different types of maps on top of each other and the same screen. So it will help us to stack the different types on top of the each other and the same screen. So this way different layers can intersect Synergize providing such more, uh, much more information so the user can easily travel between the different layers without any confusion. What are the types of GIS data? The types of GIS data here is GIS data can be separated into categories spatially reference data, which is represented by vector and raster forms, and attribute tables, which is represented in the tabular form. So within the spatial reference data uh, group, the GIS data are further classified into two different types. So what are the data types here? We have raster data, we have vector data. So many times we have seen it. So the data is classified in two different types. One is the raster data, one is the vector data. Spatial data and non-spatial data. So explain the purpose of GPS in survey. The user meets a GPS receiver local position and point on the ground. So they receive, uh, they receive the process of signals received from the satellites, compute the position, the latitude and longitude, the elevation of a point with the reference datum. So that all uh, information we can do in a GPS survey. Define vector GIS. So what is vector GIS when we are dealing with point line and polygon, when we are dealing with the uh, digital data or the digitized data that is called as a vector data. So a vector GIS works by storing the three types of geography. So one is point, one is line, one is polygon. So three types of geography will be stored here. So point as a power pole and a line as a power line and polygon as a power unity surface area in geographical database and their attributes are stored in the separate databases. Now define raster GIS. So what is raster GIS? So raster GIS, uh, it's a grid cell work by storing the attribute data as a grid cell value. Uh, grid cells are an ideal data structure for applications including uh, including the applications involving the terrain analysis. So whatever applications we do, that's, it shows in the form of the grid cells, like all the data will be in the pixels. So this data which shows in the form of the representation in the form of the grid cells is called as a raster data. Now grid cells are an ideal data structure and applications involving the uh, terrain analysis. So they have the superior analytical power to vector GIS, but grid cell map uh, representation tends to be the less attractive than the vector map representation. Now explain the types of geodatabases. So what is a geodatabase? Geodatabase means where you can just store, it's a container uh, or hold a collection of data sets. It's a hold a collection of data sets or it is called as a container where all data is saved. So there are three types of uh, uh, file geodatabase, personal geodatabase, uh, like uh, file geodatabase, personal geodatabase, enterprise geodatabase. So these three types of databases are there. So it's a type of container where all the data is dumped or all the data is stored as a server where all the data information is saved in that server. So whenever you want to uh, require the information, you can just do the query or retrieval of the data from the database. Define the personal geodatabase. Uh, so original data format for ARC GIS geodatabase which is stored in the and managed in the Microsoft Access data list and this is the limited size and tied to the Windows and operating system. Now what is enterprise geodatabase? So enterprise geodatabase is a collection of various GIS datasets held as the tables in the relational database and this is the recommended native data format for ARC GIS stored and managed in the relational database. Now I explain the purpose of ArcGIS. What is ArcGIS? ArcGIS is the software which was developed by the Insight. 
So, uh, environmental system research institute. This is the institute where the, uh, we have developed this software. So, GS Energy or GS Geo Spatial View predict, manage, analyze geography easily data are mapping desktop motor reality. So, their motto is to uh, uh, motto is to science of uh, where. So, as such, the focus for the RGS is the location and intelligence and the analytics. Uh, about GS file data formats, some of the file formats are specific GS applications such as universal spatial motorways, shape files, and all. Now, define shape files. So, shape file is having the feature class. It stores a collection of features that have the same geometry type, point line, and polygon, same attributes, and common spatial extent. Now, what is the uh, define the raster data file format? So, some file formats are unique to the specific GS applications. Uh, other are universal spatial data files formats, shape files or vector files, data imaging or geodata files for the raster and the file geodata process for the both vector and raster data. So, these are the few uh, references in which you can just go through to find out the more content about this type of definition and terminology. So, you can just find out each of the definition in a different way. So, these definitions you can just go through by getting through this uh, book and these are the few uh, links where you can just go through and find out the more contents about this definition and terminology. So, that's all for today. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.